I welcome you all to the module number 12 of this course and uh, this module is about apl applied aspect of emotional intelligence. So, this is the second lecture of this module and overall it is lecture number 30. Uh, so, today we will be talking about uh, how emotional intelligence is connected to or can be applied in the context of health and well being. So, just to give you a re brief recap of what we uh, discussed in the last lecture, in the last lecture we discussed application of emotional intelligence in the workplace context and uh, we kind we discuss various research finding and theoretical possibilities in terms of how emotional intelligence is relevant in the workplace emotional intelligence more specifically and, and emotions in general in that context we have discussed the how emotional intelligence could possibly influence various workplace related variables uh, and in that context we have discussed uh, how e ei could be connected to job performance job satisfaction uh, positive organizational attitude and behavior, leaderships and organizational stress. And uh, we kind of reviewed different possible uh, findings associated with all these variables and their possible connection with the uh, emotional intelligence. And overall we have seen that emotional intelligence could play a very important role uh, in uh, various job related uh, variables. Uh, although in some of the variables a lot of uh, possibilities were overstated, but uh, there are uh, many research findings that also supports the idea that you know emotional intelligence could be very important in uh, generally workplace and more specifically some specific job situations where human interaction and emotions are more important related to service oriented advertisement and so on. So, uh, with this uh, uh, let us start today's lecture. So, today's lecture will be focusing on health and well-being and its pos possible connection with the emotional intelligence. I will be talking about both uh, physical health and mental health as well as more specifically some variables related to well-being. So, let us start. Uh, so, emotional intelligence how it is relevant to the context of health. Now, in very broadly if you see you know uh, emotional dysfunction is at the root of various disorders. Okay. So, uh, there are different disorders, psychological disorders particularly where you know the problem is at the emotional level. So, the pe mo it could be related to emotion regulational issue or it could be some inappropriate emotions and so on. So, in lot of clinical disorders, emotional problem is at the root of psychological you know at, at the root of its causality. So, in that context we can understand that you know if there is a problem in the emotional aspects that could lead to various kind of mental health issues and it could also connect it to various physical health issues because both mental health and physical health are connected to each other. So, for example, you know in the context of clinical disorders uh, patients with depression patients with uh, depression experience irrational fears and a sense of impending doom. So, in depression there could be a lot of sadness and you know a lack of positive emotions and so on. So, that could be one of the possible symptoms you know one of the main manifestation of depression. So, there is an issue with the emotional aspects. Individuals with impulse control disorders may exhibit unusual emotional behavior such as arson, kleptomania and so on. There are people who they do they, 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 there is an issue with the impulse control they could not control their impulse and you know that could lead to various kinds of uh, behavioral problems uh, like arson or kleptomania you know. So, there is a kind of obsession to do something you know and they could not control themselves. So, there is a issue with the reg regulation of emotion. Autistic children may struggle with social and emotional functioning and to the extent that they have difficulty forming connections even with their parents. Uh, some disorders like autism and, uh, and even you know uh, disorders such as social anxiety and so on where there could be issue with the uh, forming connection with other people particularly in the autism where this there is a kind of emotional dysfunction uh, to the extent that they cannot able to connect with other people you know they could not form relationships and kind of uh, bonding with other people. So, that could be the root of this kind of disorders particularly uh, disorders like autism and so on. So, if you see all these kinds of disorders you know uh, uh, if all these uh, you know disorders mostly involve inappropriate or excessive emotional reaction in specific situations uh, such as excessive anxiety without cause. Lot of anxiety disorders that we have discussed earlier also 
has lot of excessive and irrational uh, you know anxiety people might experience and they could not regulate those anxieties which could lead to many uh, issues and uh, or difficulties in managing emotions such as reacting angrily or continuously dwelling on emotion triggers by stressful encounters so all these disorders and clinical uh, mental illnesses a uh, lot of this could be connected to major majorly you know different aspect of problems with the emotions either in terms of too much of in terms of reactions or regulation uh, uh, and there could be lack of lack of regulation and so on so all these kinds of is very clearly associated with problem with the emotions so in a broad sense we can say in lot of this uh, cases of clinical disorders uh, individuals have deficiencies in emotional intelligence so if you see uh, the typical definition of emotional intelligence where one is able to understand themselves others ex express appropriately regulate emotions and so on so in all this clinical disorder if you see you know those basic abilities they they, they are kind of there is a lack of these basic abilities so in kind of loosely we can say that uh, in all these disorders there is a deficiency in emotional intelligence you know so this is how emotional intelligence uh, or lack of emotional intelligence could lead to certain uh, disorders uh, which could be both mental as well as physical that we will be kind of looking at now so let us see more specifically now how emotional intelligence is linked to physical health now if you uh, if we if, if we look at the literature in you know, a contemporary li uh, literature where there is a pers perspective of biopsychosocial model of disease is taken where disease is taken not just because of the physical factors any even physical disease could be connected to various diverse other factors including biological factors psychological factors social factors uh, so health and illness could be explained using uh, biopsychosocial model uh, where there is a combination of biological psychological and social comp you know factors and where there is a lot of emphasis recently is given on the role of emotion in diseases so a lot of emphasis recently is given on how emotions or certain uh, particularly certain ne uh, negative so called negative emotions like you know or distressing emotions how their role you know they could kind of impact physical health in a very very, very strong way so a lot of research has also been done on that context and we will be seeing uh, some of these things uh, that you know emotions could uh, directly cause various kind of uh, physical disorders not just mental disorders physical disorders as well so many research indicated that even you know happiness and other uh, well being variables could contribute to health and longevity so on the other hand positive emotions like where there is a lot of positive emotions like when we experience well being and happiness that could actually promote uh, physical diseases and physical health uh, as well so both both the sides are there so negative emotions could lead to physical diseases and positive emotions could even contribute to health and longevity and so on so th the research has also indicated there is a direct physiological link between so there is a direct physiological link between emotion stress and physical diseases and ei may play a significant role in this connection so uh, the idea is that in the there is a phys physiological uh, connection between the emotion or distress like stress and so on whenever we experience any emotions particularly distressing emotions it could be like stressful situations or lot of anger and so on this could directly influence the phys physiology of our body including your brain and hormonal release and so on and can impact negatively and cause physical diseases uh, and uh, emotional intelligence could be linked to these connections that it could kind of moderate uh, to what extent you know stress could lead to physical diseases and so on so if you see this uh, kind this kind of uh, diagram uh, here uh, some possible uh, uh, mechanism has been explained how stressful or distressing emotion could lead to physical illnesses so if you see here so stressful event distressing it could be anxiety depression or stress traumatic experiences and so on all this could lead to physical illnesses and there are many factors which could influence this relationship relationship between distress stress and physical health uh, now whether it will lead to physical health or not or to what extent the stress will lead to 
physical health, there are many factors that kind of uh, comes in between or influence this relationship. So, one is physiological response. So, whenever we experience distress or stressful situation that could lead to sympathetic nervous system and neuroendocrine responses. So, the idea is that whenever we uh, experience stress, uh, it activates you know the certain centers in the brain like hypothalamus which could lead to uh, you know activations of various glands particularly the adrenal gland uh, which through various um, uh, mechanisms such as through pituitary gland it will activate pituitary gland which could lead to cortex part of the adrenal gland and which releases hormones like cortisol in one pathway it could also lead to like uh, you know uh, the experience of stress could directly lead to you know, sympathetic nervous system gets activated. So, that is why we experience lot of you know energy, lot of you know agitated energy in our body, uh, heartbeat increases, sweating increases, all these are actually connected to the sympathetic nervous system. Some of this we have already discussed in the physiology of emotions, you know. So, I will not go into the detail of it, now just giving you a summary of it that stressful experience could kind of you know lead to activation of sympathetic nervous system which kinds of gets activated during uh, emergency situation or whenever we experience very stressful situation. It gives you extra energy, but at the same time it could exo exhaust you. It increases heartbeat, uh, palpitations and uh, sweating and so on. So, these are symptoms that body is working hard to give you extra energy to deal with the situation. On the other hand, stress could also kind of activate various glands, particularly adrenal gland. which is connected to the stress. So, adrenal gland has two parts, one is cortex, one is medulla uh, and uh, cortex part releases cortisol. So, kind cortex leads to leads to cortisol a hormone and medulla part that is inner part of the adrenal gland releases uh, like hormones like adrenal, adrenaline and few other uh, you know noradrenaline is also, also another another hormones. So, the idea is uh, you know so stressful or distressing emotion could lead to directly activation of heart in terms of you know, palpitations in terms of uh, heart rate increases which uh, kind of uh, tries to give you extra energy and so on. Uh, it also leads to release of various hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. Adrenaline is, is immediately released whenever we experience stress, cortisol is released after some time. So, it takes some time. So, these hormones also further lead to uh, you know uh, various kinds of possible you know adverse impact particularly when there is a chronic stress. So, if you experience stress for a long time, short time it is okay, it kind of maintains and then body is balanced after some time. But if you, if one some somebody experiences a very long term or chronic stress, this kind of hormones, when it is released for a long time, this could lead to various kinds of complications in the body. Particularly, uh, cortisol could, you know, diminish uh, immune system, which is and again here it is also immune system response could go down uh, because excess of cortisol release could kind of hinder the functioning of various WBC cells, which are Im primarily responsible for body's defense mechanism. So, immune system could do down, go down, it will also kind of lead to various kinds of you know uh, release of cholesterol in the blood and which could block hearts and other things. So, it could be directly connected to the heart diseases and so on. And also whenever we experience very intense emotional situation, when the heartbeat becomes excessively fast, that could also cause wear and tear in the system, particularly to the heart. So, so this is how the mental experiences such as distress, stress, traumatic experiences, highly emotional situation could directly influence the physiology of the body itself and which could directly lead to various physical diseases. Particularly diseases like heart diseases are directly connected to stress. It could be also connected to other various uh, psychosomatic diseases. Now, stressful event or various negative emotions are also related to certain behavioral changes. 
So, whenever we experience uh, in intense stress or chronic stress in our life, this could lead to various kinds of behavioral change. For example, people could start smoking, drinking, lack of sleep, lack of exercise, all this could be connected to a lot of stressful situations in life that people do not get extra energy to do all these healthy, healthy behaviors, uh, which could indirectly lead to further, further increase the illnesses in the body and so on. And also people may not, you know, uh, so, so that is related to changes in health practices. There could be also problems in the adherence to medical advice when people are very stressed and um, they are very kind of distracted and a lot of agitated energy there people generally forget to take timely medicine and so on that could also connect to uh, further increase in the disease and so on. So, uh, emotions and particular distressing emotion could be connected to physical illnesses like this uh, through directly impacting your body and behavior. So, this is these are some of the possibilities. So, management of emotions could decrease all this impact. So, that is where you know emotional intelligence can kind of protect from the negative impact of all this uh, distressing and negative emotions. So, why uh, might EI be expected to improve physical health? So, I think we have already kind of touched upon this. So, it is uh, kind of proposed that uh, emotionally intelligent people who are uh, skilled at exp expressing, understanding and managing their emotions are also capable of adapting to stress and annoyances of everyday life. So, so more coping strategies, more healthy coping strategies are associated with emotional intelligence. So, the basic idea of emotional intelligence that you are able to manage it more properly according to the context, express it appropriately and so on. And as we have already sense lack of management of emotions, particularly distressing emotion could lead to various physical diseases. So, if somebody is having higher emotional intelligence, it is expected that you know they, they are more likely to manage those emotions properly and the negative impact of those stress on the physical health could be uh, would be minima, minimized at least it will be less as compared to someone who is not able to manage or having low emotional intelligence. So, that is kind of uh, kind of you know derivation from all these ideas. So, how more specifically we can also look at some other findings like you know why there is an expectation to improve health behaviors and outcomes. So, there can be number of uh, potential link between EI and physical health. One is uh, positive health practices are said to be facilitated by EI. So, health practices that we uh, you know individuals of high EI are more likely to engage in proactive self care. So, for example, no some it will have a positive impact on health promoting behaviors which are negatively impacted by stress and so on. So, so in that sense like health promoting behavior such as exercise, diet and uh, all these kinds of thing could be kind of you know uh, directly related to higher emotional intelligence and that can promote physical health. So, kind of it will protect those negative behavioral impact of stress and negative emotions. So, in that sense it will be a kind of link to uh, better physical health. So, basically the idea is high EI should lead to more successful and efficient cell regulation through health related behaviors, thereby encouraging help seeking and health regimen maintenance and so on. So, more po positive behaviors would be facilitated by uh, higher emotional intelligence, which could uh, lead to better health. Second is lower stress reactivity has been also linked with EI may also be possible mechanism related to emotional competence and functioning. So, basically idea is the more you are able to cope with a situation, the less emotional reactivity will be there. If someone is not able to cope with a situation, obviously the stress experiences and the emotions will be very high because you do not know what to do. So, the it gets intensified stress and other distressing emotions. So, if someone has higher emotional intelligence and they are able to manage it with various resources, they have then that stress reactivity or emotional reactivity will be less and uh, that will have a positive impact on the health. The more you are physiologically impacted, the more negative impact it will have because we have seen the mechanism possible mechanism. So, the individuals with high EI may see uh, environmental stressors and obstacles as challenges rather than stressors. So, as we have already discussed also somewhere that you know stress is more about how you interpret the situation. So, people with high EI are more likely to see it as a challenge and try to deal with it. And if you see it as a kind of 
very strong stressors and then you will succumb to it that you do not know how, how to deal with. So, uh, so it then uh, the way you interpret the situation accordingly you will experience the emotions. The moment you are able to manage uh, the emotions or you have an interpret the situation that I will be able to handle this situation the stress will be less. So, so that could also be connected to emotional intelligence. Third is uh, EI related competencies should promote more active coping. So, active coping through treatment seeking and adherence to medical regimens reducing the severity and chronicity of the illness experience. So, this is I think we have already also discussed that more active healthy coping strategies are connected to e emotional intelligence. So, people are more likely to deal more effectively more healthy strategies they will take take also help support and from the other people and so on. So, in that sense they will be able to better coping is always associated with uh, better physical health, mental health and so on. And so, there is also rising evidence that high EI individuals are rooted in supportive social networks as a result may be benefit uh, they get much higher benefit from social support network. So, people who are able to kind of uh, having higher emotional intelligence in terms of they are expressing regulation and know the context and understand others and themselves having higher empathy. So, generally they have better social networks more meaningful relationship. So, they will more likely to get support during the time of crisis and so on. So, in that sense uh, that coping is much easier when there are other people around you to support you. So, you know then the crisis situation you are able to deal with the situation is a much better way because you have more resources. Now, you are not alone there are other people who can uh, support you with their resources. So, in that sense that also promotes better coping and uh, that can lead to better physical health. Fourth is high EI individuals are less likely to develop problematic habits. So, lot of problematic habits people develop uh, like uh, gambling or addiction and so on excessive obsession with drinking, smoking, drugs these are all uh, could be related to you know uh, somehow not able to regulate your emotions you know and succumb to your lot of impulses and so on. So, if people are with high emotional intelligence they are generally able to deal with them and try to regulate their behavior in the context of this addictive behaviors. So, and this addictive behaviors could lead to many um, adverse health impacts. So, in that sense they are less likely to be impacted by this and uh, more likely to have better health. So, these are all connected to self regulation abilities which is important characteristics of emotional intelligence. So, lack of self regulation can lead to all these addictive behaviors and so on. So, the people with high emotional intelligence are less, less likely to be involved in this. So, due to higher level of self awareness and self control uh, people with high EI should be able to avoid this at least you know uh, avoid this kind of maladaptive uh, behaviors and so on which is again connected to physical health. So, these are kind of summary of a uh, lot of this that we have discussed how emotional intelligence could be uh, linked to better physical health some of the variables which could kind of explain this relationship. So, that is called mediating variables means this may variables will come in between uh, both the very uh, emotional intelligence and physical health. So, emotional intelligence will lead to all these mediating variables which will ultimately promote physical health. So, some of this that we have already discussed are people with uh, higher emotional intelligence will have will kind of uh, it will lead to greater use of proactive self care health practices that we have already discussed. Uh, higher emotional intelligence will also lead to more efficient self regulation towards health related behaviors. So, they will be able to regulate and uh, lead you know kind of uh, use more health related behaviors. They will also have fewer unhealthy habits like smoking, drinking and drugs we have already discussed. Better interactions with healthcare professionals and kind of understanding and using it in more appropriately. More frequent task oriented coping to deal with the health problems, more healthy coping strategies they are li uh, likely to use like taking social support or the or support from the right kind of people and so on. Uh, greater social support resources that can be relied upon at the time of stress and illnesses. So, this and some other problem solving strategies connected to that. Positive emotions and related positive effects of the immune system. So, they are more likely to experience positive emotions and uh, this also has a beneficial impact on our immune system. So, since stress has a negative impact on our immune system, 
So, more relaxation, more positive emotions research also shows has a positive impact on uh, our immune system. So, all these things could lead to better physical health. So, these are some of the possible kind of summary of what we have discussed. Now, let us see some of the uh, specific research findings connected to this. So, these are a lot of these are kind of theoretical propositions obviously and some of these are also uh, empirical support we have already discussed. Uh, but let us see more specific uh, research findings related to where actual researchers are done and they try to connect uh, emotional intelligence with physical health. Uh, let us see some of these findings. So, one of the meta-analytical study conducted by uh, Sute et al. 2007, where they tried to assess the degree of association between emotional intelligence and various health indices including physical, mental and psychosomatic aspects. So, meta-analysis basically kind of summarizes various studies that are done in a particular area area of, uh, of EI and health related variables. So, they summarized diverse uh, studies and uh, they tried to see what is the trend of research findings. So, because different findings, different studies will have different findings. So, meta-analysis kind of collates all of them and try to see the trend in their directions. So, one such meta-analysis study showed uh, uh, that what uh, that, that, that it showed that on an average there was a significant and positive correlation between EI and each type of health indicators. So, EI has been found to be positively correlated with various health indi indicators such as you know physical, physical health, mental health and psychosomatic health. So, it kind of promotes various health. Specifically, EI was exhibited to moderate positive relationship with physical health. So, there is a moderate uh, positive relationship uh, coefficient is 0.22. So, that means, there is a positive relationship and th there is a moderate, it is not like very strong, but at least uh, higher EI likely to promote positive uh, physical health and the relationship is moderate, you know, not very less, not very strong, uh, but it impacts positively. It is also related to mental health, almost similar correlation, which is 0.23 uh, with the mental health also, it also kind of positively associated with mental health and a very uh, little stronger positive relationship with psychosomatic health uh, that is 0.31. So, all various kinds of indicators of health, physical health, mental health, psychosomatic is more like you know uh, the various diseases which could be uh, caused by mental factors uh, or stress related factors uh, where the cause is mental factors and it could in, uh, you know kind of impact physical symptoms you know. So, various even, even cardiovascular disease could be also you know in, in many cases it could be psychosomatic. Uh, so, various kinds of physical symptoms could manifest itself from the and the factors could be psychological. So, all these physical uh, kind of health related uh, uh, indicators it showed emotional intelligence kind of is positively connected. So, basically higher the emotional intelligence better these indicators of health. So, at least moderately uh, related to strongly related to uh, these physical indicators. So, there is an actual empirical evidence to it. Another meta analysis also showed by Martin Settle uh, also distinguished uh, between physical, uh, psychosomatic, and mental health with EI. They also did the similar psychosomatic, uh, similar meta analysis uh, uh, in 12 independent studies of physical health, the average correlation with EI was 0.27. Again, it is a moderate correlation they also found and in 16 studies of psychosomatic health, the average was 0.33. So, again the uh, findings are very similar to the earlier meta analysis. So, the research finding indicates a modest connection between emotional intelligence and positive health related indicators and behaviors at least meta analysis shows. So, there is a, a modest correlation between EI and some research findings in those kind of there are other research finding that shows positive in uh, uh, emotional intelligence also could be related to health related behaviors. So, we have seen in this meta analysis directly health was measured indicators of directly health, physical health, mental health. Emotional intelligence could also promote to those health indicators indirectly by promoting health related behaviors. So, behaviors also research show that some positive health related behaviors are also associated with emotional intelligence. So, th through another mechanism for example, uh, 
uh, some research shows there is a modest correlation between EI and engaging in activities like dieting and exercising. So, these are positive health related behaviors which promotes health has also been found to be positively associated with EI. So, people with higher EI are more likely to uh, do activities which promote health such as dieting and exercising. Low EI college students especially males have been found to be at risk of engaging in pot potentially harmful behaviors such as illegal drug use, excessive alcohol consumptions and deviating behaviors, deviant behaviors. So, uh, research also shows that you know kind of another evidence that people especially a uh, college student where they have low emotional intelligence, they are more likely particularly the males uh, have been found to be at higher risk of engaging in some harmful behaviors which are harmful for the physical health and overall other mental health also such as drug use, excessive alcohol consumptions, deviant behaviors and so on. So, this also could influence uh, uh, health uh, because uh, the idea is that people uh, the students with low higher emotional intelligence are less likely to engage in these kind of activities which would promote health and so on. So, EI is also connected to health related behaviors as well as directly related to various physical health indicators. So, this is how uh, empirical evidence also kind of shows evidence of various uh, hypotheses and uh, theoretical propositions. Other research also shows that adolescents with low EI as determined by various indicators of emotional intelligence have been reported to be at heightened risk of alcohol and tobacco use. So, these are uh, some other findings. So, low EI has been connected to this kind of uh, risky behaviors of alcohol tobacco use. Adolescents may also struggle effectively uh, to effectively manage their emotion in response to peer pressure related to smoking, drinking and use of unhealthy substances. So, these are all connected to low EI uh, and uh, certain uh, behaviors which could be connected to health. So, they are also less effectively able to manage their emotions in the context of peer pressure related to smoking, drinking and unhealthy substances. So, they are more likely to succumb to those pressures. Oppositely, uh, adolescents with higher EI may possess strong abilities in uh, processing social information including social risk and employ a wider range of coping strategies when faced to situation that could increase the risk of smoking and other behavior. They are also more likely to adapt to recognizing unwanted peer pressure and leading to resistance. So, basically uh, more people uh, students with adolescents with higher EI are less likely to engage in lot of this risky behaviors like alcohol uh, and drug use and so on uh, as they are more likely to effectively manage their emotions and less likely to succumb to uh, a lot of peer pressures and so on. So, that could also be connected to uh, health and so on. Now, let us see how emotional intelligence is related to mental health and well-being. So, when we talk about mental health, there are two aspects. Uh, one is you know disorders, illnesses and another is well-being part. So, both the aspects we will see how it is connected to emotional intelligence. So, when we talk about you know kind of mental health, so it also it talks about illnesses or disorders, mental disorders and it also has a component of well-being. So, so mental health is not just about absence of diseases. So, that is also important to be healthy means there should not be diseases. So, that part also need to understand and to be healthy does not mean only absence of disease. So, there is a WHO definition to be healthy also means there is a presence of some positive qualities which is called well-being. So, you should be also have certain well-being not just absence of disease. So, there has to be absence of disease plus there should be indicators of well-being to be called as mentally healthy. So, or physically even healthy also includes the same definition. Okay. So, let us see these two parts when you talk about mental health and how it is connected to emotional intelligence. Physical health we have already discussed some possibilities and some research findings. So, there is a lot of support uh, to the idea that emotional elements play a significant part in determining one's mental health and subjective well-being and that emotional dysfunctions play a significant role in development of mental diseases. And this is already kind of established fact as we all know because 
A lot of mental disorders I think we have already started talking about this lecture starting with this concept only that lo more, lot of uh, majority of the psychological disorders are basically disorders of emotions and there is a problem with the emotions. So, so directly you know the emotional intelligence can directly pair, play a role there you know and as we have already seen loosely we can say uh, people with lot of these emotional issues and disorders lacks emotional certain indicators of emotional intelligence. So, mental health is directly connected to that well-being and uh, various indicators of well-being is also directly connected to your emotional life. How you experience life is largely depends on your emotional expressions. Whether you uh, are happy or unhappy or sadness, these are all connected to emotions only. So, mental health is very strongly evidently connected with uh, the idea of emotional intelligence. So, the case of emotional intelligence key function in mental health may be specifically referred to the importance of emotion regulation particularly emotion regulation is very important in the context of mental health. So, loosely uh, as we have already said uh, that one could claim that many people with mental health problems also have lack of emotional intelligence in certain dimensions or could be in all dimensions. For example, uh, mental disorders like anxiety and depressions are characterized by excessive negative emotions that could be linked to lack of EI. So, a lot of these disorders like anxiety disorders and depression people may not be uh, so it is associated with lot of negative emotions and it could be le linked to lack of uh, or lack of ability to regulate those emotions. So, in, in some sense loosely one can say some of the emotional intelligence abilities uh, could be you know they may be lacking in some of the uh, abilities related to emotional intelligence. Uh, some disorders like conduct disorders can be linked to lack of self control. Some people have impulse control issues uh, you know. So, they become addictive to some substances and so on they could not con they cannot control their behavior. So, that is also related to emotion regulation issues. So, this kind of disorder is also directly can be linked to lack of emotional intelligence. Some disorder could be linked to social disconnection such as autism which may be normal cognitive intelligence, but has difficulty in social interaction. So, some disorders are directly connected to lack of con ability to connect with people uh, like autism and other things. So, where social connection is very important aspect of emotional intelligence. So, this aspect could be lacking in those individuals with those disorders. So, EI and mental disorders uh, is could be very strongly and directly connected. EI may play a very significant role in variety of mental disorders, especially where there is an emotional disturbances, impulse control issues and social interactional issues or social connection issues as we have already discussed. Let us see more specifically some evidences related to some of the emotional disorders or affective disorders, some research finding associated with that. So, self reported emotional intelligence has been linked to various emotional disorders like anxiety and depression in people who do not have clinical condition. So, every disorders or every uh, disorders may have you know some people may be in the clinical conditions where you know this is an extreme form of disorder and uh, some aspect of disorder could be uh, found in normal populations also that it is not in that extreme level, but still you know some people may score high in those let us say score of depression. That person may not be clinically depressed, but uh, the score of depression could be high. So, as compared to other people the depressive tendencies or symptoms could be higher, but not in a clinical uh, lot to the extent of clinical disorder. So, for normal people may have uh, high score low score in lot of this you know symptomatic uh, disorders. Uh, so, even in normal populations also it was found that you know emotional intelligence has been linked to various disorders like anxiety and depression in people who are not in the clinical conditions you know. Similar findings came from studies uh, involving a patient diagnosed with mental disorders. Even with mental disorders, similar findings were found that people with these disorders like anxiety and depression, they have low EI scores. When uh, emotional intelligence is testing as an ability, so emotional intelligence has been conceptualized in various ways. We have already discussed various theoretical positions. Some theoretical position measures it as a trait, as a personality trait. Some other uh, theoretical perspective looks at it as a ability and some theories looks at it as a combination of these two. 
So, when EI is tested as an ability means ability certain abilities that we develop in our life rather than just part of personality. So, there were differences in EI scores between people with clinical conditions and without clinical conditions. So, it is hard to figure out. So, basically EI score was less with people with certain clinical disorders as compared to people who do not have these disorders. However, it is uh, difficult to pinpoint whether low EI causes these disorders or the other way around. It is possible that low EI may lead to these disorders or it is also possible that because of these disorders people kind of score low in emotional intelligence. So, which way it uh, you know uh, it could be you know mixed in uh, you know some cases it could be one way some cases maybe other way. So, kind of it is not very clear. So, low EI may lead to certain disorders or disorders may lead to low EI that is also possible. So, for example, in one study suggested that depression might lead to lower EI rather than the other way around. So, when you somebody develops depression you know it lead to lower emotional intelligence rather than lower emotional intelligence causing depression. So, that is also possible. <coughs> in another study by uh, Sommerfeld et al in 2011, they also looked at people with clinical anxiety disorders like panic disorders, obsessive compulsive disorders and social phobia. They found that these individuals had low EI scores. So, people with all these psychological disorders, they found that they have low EI scores. Now, uh, research evidences are also available in the context of uh, disorders related to social deviance and impulse control. So, low AI is linked to several issues. It has been associated with externalizing behavior and social deviance, particularly people with uh, problem with socially appropriate behaviors, uh, people with psychopathic traits in particular struggle with recognizing and dealing with their emotions, people who do kind of people with antisocial personalities who do socially uh, inappropriate behaviors in times of crime and so on, uh, they also have issues with you know emotional uh, you know, dealing with emotions and so on or right kind of understanding of emotions or empathy and so on. So, that is why you could harm someone because you do not have empathy that is why lack of empathy can lead to all kinds of deviance behavior also. On the flip side, uh, high EI in adolescent and adults seem to be help them handle social situations better because dealing with social situation is one of the indicators of emotional intelligence. So, they can process social information well and use various ways to resist peer pressure and deal with situation that could harm their health. So, social deviance and impulse control again you know people with high EI are less likely to engage in those kind of behaviors. So, there, there is an uh, substantial empirical support to that. So, people with low EI have trouble managing their emotions uh, with when in the context of uh, pressure, peer pressure or societal pressure on smoking, drinking and an unhealthy substance. So, they are able to low EI people are not able to handle those emotions and succumb to those pressures. High EI are, are less likely to succumb to those pressures. Additionally, low EI is linked to more severe addiction issues including smoking, alcohol consumption and drug use and so on. So, two important aspects of EI understanding emotions and managing them play a very important role in preventing addictions. So, addiction is one of the one of the important aspect of addiction is understanding and managing of certain emotional aspects which could lead to that. So, EI could protect against those addictive behaviors. Some dysfunctional social interaction as we said another class of social disorders where there is person is not able to connect or create form relationship uh, or bond with other people. So, that is also connected to low EI because social higher emotional intelligence one of the indicator is that you know people are good at kind of connecting with other people having empathy and you know all these kinds of thing. So, social connection and interaction play uh, Pro, uh, problems are common in certain disorders like schizophrenia and autism. People with this condition often have difficulty with social connections and interactions uh, which might be related to lower emotional intelligence. So, this kind of certain disorder like schizophrenia and autism people are generally you know 
not able to form social connections and uh, they could not interact social in social situations uh, which would be connected to low emotional intelligence. Now, reason could be so many reasons you know uh, we are not going into that, but it symptom manifest as one of the low 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 scored low as low kind of score in emotional intelligence. Now, research shows that people uh, with conditions like uh, schizotypal schizophrenia and autism tend to score lower on EI test. Generally, these people tend to score lower on this kind of scales uh, and the kind of uh, the symptoms also kind of kind of validates those kind of lack of those skills related to emotional intelligence. Another condition called as elixithymia as a term where there could be very strong connection to emotional intelligence. So, elixithymia is a psychological term that refers to difficulty or inability to recognize and explain one's feelings. So, this is a condition where one is not kind of find it difficult to um, recognize and explain one's feeling you know. So, there is a kind of difficulty in understanding one's emotions and explain it to others. So, that is the condition called as elixithymia. Uh, Sifnios in 1970 this coined this term called elixithymia to describe this cognitive affective condition or illness that affects how people manage their emotions. So, generally people in these conditions they also are not able to kind of explain how the what they are feeling, uh, recognize what they are feeling and obviously that can lead to lack of management also. So, this construct is a multifaceted uh, construct which includes a variety of symptoms such as difficulty in identifying and distinguishing emotion from the bodily sensation. So, the people with this condition they are not able to identify and distinguish between emotion and, and their bodily sensations you know. So, subtle uh, distinguish they cannot make uh, difficulty in describing and verbalizing emotions. So, this they are fi they find it difficult to describe what kind of emotions they are feeling. So, verbalize they are not able to do it and also describe and because there is a sense of lack of understanding and lack of uh, uh, able to describe that. Poor imagination, externally oriented thinking style and reduced empathy. So, they also have a reduced empathy. So, these are the symptoms uh, cluster of symptoms that is described under alexithymia. So, if a person falls on the low end of this emotional intelligence case, he or she may suffer from this alexithymia. So, if you see all these symptoms, these are kind of people with very low emotional intelligence will have these kind of symptoms. So, this condition could be you know very uh, clearly connected to low emotional intelligence. So, people with very low emotional intelligence may be called as you know that is this alexithymia conditions could clearly reflect that. So, there is a strong relation link between alexithymia and low emotional intelligence trait at least according to the literature. So, although these two uh, personality traits may appear to be distinct, conceptually they may be distinct elixithymia and emotional intelligence, uh, but there is a very strong overlap uh, between these two and they are very strongly inversely connected. Both are very oppositely connected. High emotional intelligence all the symptoms people with elixithymia lack all the qualities of a high emotional intelligent individuals. So, they may be distinct concept, but they are overlapping and inversely connected to each other. So, research also shows although difficulty monitoring other people feeling an emotion is not part of this alexithymia conditions, but empirical study shows that individuals with high level of this alexithymia have difficulty in accurately identifying emotion in others facial expression. So, since they are not able to understand their own and express their own emotions, they also research shows uh, that they also lack ability in terms of understanding others emotion in terms of from the facial expression and so on. So, that is also kind of harmed. So, so own inability to understand own emotion also kinds of can reflect in terms of inability to understand others emotion. And clinical reports that uh, alexithymia individuals have a limited capacity of empathizing with emotional states of others. So, there is a lack of empathy also. Uh, also, there is an empirical support that alexithymia is linked to difficulties in discriminating between different emotions as well as limited ability to think about and use emotions to cope in stressful situations. So, if you see all these uh, emotional uh, abilities that are connected to emotional intelligence, 
people with this condition alexithymia lack all these abilities so and research clearly shows they are connected to all this lack of all these abilities so now let us see some of the indicators related to well being so disorders we have seen mental disorders emotional intelligence and empirical support is very clear that you know emotional intelligence or lack of emotional intelligence could be connected to various mental disorders now let us see how emotional intelligence could be linked to the well being the other part of mental health so there is here is also where is there is an obvious connection where an you know, emotional intelligence as proposed by selovi and mayer also underlined its importance to personal growth and self actualization so various well being indicators like personal growth self actualizations these are also kind of inbuilt in some of the theories like theories of selovi and mayer that ei is connected to that there is an uh, evidence also shows that ei also correlates with variety of outcomes including happiness research shows higher ei is connected to higher happiness optimism better mood and so on all these are indicators of well being positive mental health the research also shows that emotionally intelligent people are more satisfied in their various contexts such as work more likely to express satisfied yeah or they are the kind of know how to choose the right kind of job and be satisfied you know so the work satisfaction is also higher among them self reported emotional intelligence also demonstrated a strong association with well being more frequent positive emotion life satisfaction self esteem so these are all indicators of positive mental health and well being and emotional intelligence has been linked with all these indicators in various research findings individuals with high ei also tend to experience better mental health greater life satisfaction so these are also uh, findings that clearly shows the positive relationship between uh, ei and well being indicators so here it is again summarized uh, diagram that shows taken from the zidner and kulik's uh, book from to, uh, written on in 2011 which kind of summarizes how emotional intelligence could be linked to psychological health and well being so emotional intelligence could lead to more adaptive coping with social demands it could lead to greater social competence and richer social networks better emotional regulation repair disturbing relationships or disturbing relationships or emotions better handling of social stress and interpersonal conflicts lower level of negative emotions and higher level of positive emotions all this could lead to better uh, psychological health and well being so this could also so kind of explain the possible mechanisms through this model so these are some of the things uh, related to uh, how emotional intelligence uh, is significant and could be directly connected to various indicators of health and well being health including physical health as well as mental health so this concept has lot of possible applications in the domain of health and well being therapies and so on and uh, is very significant in the context of uh, this domain so with this i stop here and uh, we'll have one more lecture on the application and that will be the last lecture uh, so so that is lecture number 31 so with this i stop here thank you mm -hmm.